stay alive, a cell must exchange materials with its environment. Some materials move in and out of the cell by a process called passive transport. Other materials must be carried across in a process called active transport. The membrane of a cell is semi-permeable. This means that some small molecules, such as oxygen and water, can diffuse across freely. Carbon dioxide and amino acids can also diffuse into or out of the cell. The net movement of molecules depends upon their concentration inside versus outside the cell. Molecules move naturally from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. When molecules move in this way, no energy is required, and they are said to move by passive transport. Molecules with strong electrical charges, such as ions, cannot simply diffuse across the cell membrane. No matter how small the ions are, their charge prevents them from moving through the layer of lipid tails in the middle of the membrane. Many molecules, including proteins, are simply too large to diffuse across the cell membrane. Carbohydrates, such as sugars and starches, are also too large to diffuse across. Large molecules are transported across the membrane by carrier proteins in the membrane. Glucose, a sugar, is one molecule transported in this way. Glucose attaches to the carrier protein. The protein changes shape and releases the glucose molecule inside the cell. In this way, Glucose is moved down its concentration gradient from the area of higher concentration to the area of lower concentration. Like diffusion, this process, called facilitated transport, requires no energy. It is, therefore, another example of passive transport. Cells must also pump molecules against a concentration gradient. Ions such as sodium and potassium are moved in this way. Again, a special carrier protein, in this case the sodium-potassium pump, is involved. ATP transfers energy to the carrier protein. This causes the carrier protein to change shape so that sodium ions readily bind to it. The binding of sodium causes another shape change and the sodium ions are released outside the cell. The protein can now bind potassium ions. When the potassium ions bind, the protein once again changes shape and the potassium ions are released inside the cell. At this point, the energy gained from ATP has been used up. The sodium-potassium pump needs energy from another ATP to repeat the cycle. The pump moves sodium ions against their concentration gradient. It also moves potassium ions against their concentration gradient. Moving ions this way requires energy and thus is an example of active transport.